All right, guys, this is motor calculations for the electrical exam, JW prep, journeyman prep. Uh, but this is for my community college class, ELT 242. There are six steps in calculating motor calculations, and we're going to go over, this video goes over steps one and two of that six-step process. Need you to get your code book out. Here's my collection. I like to show it off every once in a while, but I need to get your 2020 code book out and turn to Article 430. That's the one we're going to be looking at. Okay, now that you got your code book out, hopefully we you got it out, you got it open to 430. The tables that we'll be covering today for step one is 430 248 for single phase motors, table 430 250 for three phase motors. That's step one. And then step two, we're going to calculate the minimum overload protection and the maximum overload protection, 430, 32A1, and 32C. That's the ones we're going to be looking at. So there's four tables, more or less, or four articles. Okay, step one. What are we trying to do here? First of all, we need the, we need the amperage. We need the ampacity. The amperage the motor is going to be pulling or making, everybody you want to call it. We need that full load current. Step one is very important because you've got to get the right amount of amperage on from the nameplate or these articles. Step one is used in all steps. So if you go down through there and you get the wrong amperage and you start calculating, you're going to get the wrong answer. You've got to make sure you use the right and get the right one. Step one is so important. But first of all, if you if it's available, you use the full load current on the nameplate. But if it ain't available and you know the horsepower, the voltage you're using, then you go to Article 430, 248, or 250. It depends on what how many phases the motor, if it's single phase or three phase. So what we're doing right here is full load current in amperage for single phase alternating current motors. 430248. So what we got, let's say we've got a one horse motor. It's 115 volts. Well, it's 16 amps. You, you know, you go from right to the left. Whoops. This is real easy. It ain't hard at all. You got 115 volts, 200 volts, hardly ever used, 208 and 230. And it goes up to 10 horsepower. This is the three phase chart, article 250. <clears throat> we need to use this one if it's a three phase motor. It ain't hard at all either. I mean, you can, hopefully you can figure it out. Okay, questions for step one. What's the full load current, the FLC, of a single phase five horsepower 220 volt motor? What's the full load current of a 10 horsepower 208 three phase motor? What's the full load current of a single phase three quarter horsepower 110 volt motor? And a three phase 40 horse 440 volt motor? We're going to answer these questions or you can do them yourself. You can pause the video right now, answer them, and then we'll get the questions or the answers here in a second. But this article right here it shows the first question, five horsepower, you can see right down there in the, the red arrow, we're going to use a 230 volt column, so our answer should be 28 amps. These ain't hard at all, are they? It's, you know, I was overthinking it probably. One of the things I want to show you is up there, it says the voltage ranges from 120 to 110 to 120 or 220 to 240. So you look at that column, it says, it says 230 volts. I don't know, my question said 220 volts. Well, if it's between 220 and 240, then you use the 230 volt chart or table or line. Same thing with 115 volts. Let's say the question calls for a 110 volt five horsepower motor. Well, you're going to use the 115 volt chart. That's kind of a trick question there. They throw you sometimes on the German prep. Okay, here's the answers. Full load current for 
single phase five horses, 220 volt motor. Like I said, we use a 230 volt charge, it's 28 amps. Full load current for a 10 horse 208 three phase motor is 30.8. Single phase three quarter 110 volt motor. See, there's a 110 volt. We're going to use a 115 volt chart, 13.8. What about the three horse or three phase 40 horse 440 volt motor? It's 52 amps. So these ain't hard at all. Basically, you go to the right chart. You got to remember the charts. If you're taking the German test, I would tab those somehow, step one, step two, or full load current, overload, step, something of that nature. They sell tabs all day long on eBay and stuff that y'all can find. All right, step two is the overload protection. The overload is what protects the motor. The breaker protects the wiring. That's step three and four. We'll get it to it later. But step two is protect the motor. We want the motor to be able to start, and you got that inrush current. It takes a lot of amperage to pull it, but we don't want it to trip. So we've got these overloads here that allows it to start and maintain a good ampacity, but we don't want it to get too hot. We don't. The motor will burn up itself trying to work. The biggest enemy is heat to a motor. I've always heard that. We want to keep the motor. Usually a motor don't go bad, something causes it to go bad. And most of the time it's that heat. So we gotta keep it from heating up. And how do we do that? We, can, we control the amperage. So step two, overload protection, we take the step one, we find the full load current and we multiply it by what minimum 430-32A1 says, if it calls for minimum protection. We want the minimum protection, then we're gonna use 430-32A1. And it says right here, a separate overload device that is responsive for the motor current. It's protecting the motor. This device, it chokes down the current or keeps it at bay. It limits, limits it. The device shall be selected to trip or shall be rated at no more than the following percent of the motor nameplate full load current. And like I said, if we can get the nameplate, then we use it. If we can't use the nameplate, or can't find it, then we would go based on the horsepower and the voltage. The multipliers, it says marked service factor of 1.15 or greater, then we use we multiply the full load current times 125%. If the motors are marked with a temperature rise of 40 degrees Celsius or less, then we multiply it times the full load current by 125%. All other motors are 115%. So if the question says anything about service factor of 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.15, .1 because it's 1.15 or greater, so if the question says 1.15, then we're going to multiply the full load current times 125%. If the temperature rise is 40 degrees Celsius or less, we're going to multiply the full load current by 125%. If the question does not say anything about service factor, temperature rise, any of that, we're going to multiply it by 115%. So basically this chart here, or this step, you take your full load current and you got three multipliers there. 125%, 125%, or 115%. That's for minimum. So if the question asks for the overload protection, you use the minimum. If it says minimum, you use the minimum. All right, sample question. What is the minimum overload protection for that five horse, 230 volt single phase motor? Well, we established that the Full load current was 28 amps. That's what we had. That's what this is the first question you asked on step one. Well, it doesn't say anything about service factor. The question doesn't say anything about temperature rise, and it does say minimum. So we're using the all other motor percentage. So we take full load current times 1.15 and 32.2 amps. So we need to size an overload at 32.2 amps or find the overload next size up closest to that.
what is the minimum overload protection for a single phase 5 horse 230 volt motor with a service factor of 1.15 it has service factor in there so what's our multiplier 125 percent or 1.25 so now our answer is 35 amps because we added the service factor issue see these ain't hard all right, what if the question says maximum? And the only time you use this chart is when the question says the word maximum in it. What is the maximum overload? If it just says what is the overload protection, you use minimum. But if it says maximum, you use these multipliers. And it's the same thing as the minimum as far as the service factor and the temperature rise. So if it's 1.15 or greater on the service factor, then you go to 140%. If the temperature rise is 40 degrees or less, you use 140%. All other motors are 130%, 1.3 multiplier. So these ain't hard either. You know, if it says minimum, use that chart. If you use max, it says maximum, use this chart. So the keys, it must say maximum to use the maximum percentages. If it doesn't say, you use the minimum percentages. If it doesn't mention service factor or temperature, we don't use them. You'd use 115% or 130%. You can kind of get these in your head that, so you don't have to like go back and look at that actual article in the code book. You know, all of the motors 115%, it's got a service factor or temperature rise. You got to remember the 1.15 or 40 degrees or less, but that's 125 percent, and then the maximum, 140 to 130 percent. It's not hard. Use the full load motor nameplate if possible, and that's kind of more of a real world situation. On the test, it's going to basically say you got to go to Article 240, 430, 248, or 250 to get the full load current. It may give it to you in the question but I'm sure they're going to let you make you look in the book. Okay, here's some questions. I need you to do these. You can stop the video right now, try to answer these questions. You know, you may want to write down, go back before and write down the service factor and the percentages. That way these will be easy. You can look up full load current and then do those. But you can pause it right now. <clears throat> All right, we're back. La -di -da. The answers are, I've got a 30 horse 480 volt motor with a service factor of 1.2. We say 40 amps, which is the full load current, times 1.25 because the service factor is greater than 1.15, so it's 50 amps. The overload protection of a 20 horse 208 three phase motor, temperature rise is 35 degrees, that's less than 40. So we're saying full load current is 59.4, 1.25, multiplier 74.25. What's the maximum overload protection? So we gotta use the maximum chart, 11.44. And this one says, what's the overload protection of a 30 horse 463 phase service factor of 110? It says 46 amps. You're saying 46, what's wrong? This is below 1.15. So it said service factor, but it was below 1.15. So that's basically not saying it has one. So it's gotta be greater than 1.15 before, or 1.15 or greater before we add the 1.25 multiplier. So this one doesn't count. All right, here's your assignment. Questions to be answered and turned in on Moodle. Answer these questions and give them to me on Moodle. I will have a spot in the motors spot on Moodle to answer these, or have, turn in these answers. And if you got any questions, you can holler at me. Uh, like I said, pause this video, get your code book out, answer these questions, and turn them in. And we'll have, then after that, you can go to steps three and four and start on that quiz. All right, talk to y'all later.